What's up, Dr. Gilbert? What are you cooking there? Well, the filet mignon was put off till tomorrow night, so we're having reconstituted macaroni, reconstituted chili, and dry rice. Mmm. Sounds very good. What did you do today other than uh, stir up that? Looking over the beautiful color lake. Rode a kitty car around all day. <laughs> Flipped it over a couple of times. Brought up some gear from the fjord. Bounced itself around a bit. Other than that, not much. Packed up. I'm ready to go home. Oh, don't speak of home yet. We got two more weeks of this fun. That's right. <laughs> We're going to show the fans at home this beautiful pantry here. Look at that. Look at all that crap dinner. There's a whole crate of box. Look at it all. The crate of it. The share of mashed potatoes. We got enough mashed potatoes here to last us all winter. Although we're only going to be here two this weeks. This is the real good stuff, though. Can you do a product advert for that one? What's that? Super, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The rusty cans of ham. The rusty cans, yeah. The swollen ones are the particularly interesting ones. Yeah. Hey, beauty. Oh, there's the boys' beer. All right. It's a little dark in here for you to see. It, but... These things are fun. Table again. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Peach. That's uh, Peter Doran fans. I can hear the Trent girls. Oh. Yeah, we should have a camera over here with you rice hanging off your chin. There, you're looking good. Hmm. <laughs> Is there any drool under my mouth? Here, pass me the camera. <laughs> <laughs> no more than normal. A Dr. Jim Buttle. Miles E. Right. Oh, look at that. Have some rice. <laughs> rice in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, been up here too long. <laughs> no, we've only been here what? Uh, Not even two weeks. Not even two weeks. Just over ten days. I'm gonna zoom in on those cookies over there. Richard just loves these cookies. There's thousands of them. Look at them all. I don't know where he bought them. There's whole boxes in there. That's my breakfast right over there. Chocolate chip cookies and a coffee. Keeps me going. When he leaves, Richard's intending to, before he goes, take the remaining cookies, crumple them all up, throw them all over his bed, and roll back and forth. And yeah. Preferably that coating himself with Mazzola. Ooh. Beforehand, so he comes back nicely Jeez, battered. Jim, I don't know. I'm reading my mind again. <laughs> Becoming too transparent. We're talking no, to sleep no, again. Just... <laughs> Transferring your fantasies to other people's right. persona. <laughs> See, my new place, I live two blocks away from Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Here's that rice again. <laughs> keeps on coming back like a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but is there sauce left that's going to return for the third dinner? Yes, there is. <laughs> oh, pass it over. We can't let that. <laughs> we can. There's more there than you can eat. Is there? Yes, the humble abode of Axel Hyber, color like kitchen house. That's better. I took the edge off that. Uh, so here's a here's a things to do list. Uh, it's from two days ago, Pete. Get the get the game. Mm -hmm. I guess. From Wilfred Laurier University. Who wants Coffee, mate. Tastes great. Doo doo. Can you read those sports fans? Oops, I almost dropped it. We'll just do the macro zoom. Oh, yeah. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Sauce from hell. That's mediocre compared to the other day. There we go. Look at those ingredients. I can actually read them. 
I like that artificial flavors lactic acid. Acid. Where's the uh see of Andy Warhol? Mm. Turn the camera off. Pick mm. your nose for the sports. <laughs> your finger right up. Oh, there we go. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yeah, it turns into a into a queen's monkey. That's it. Mm. There's the coffee of death sports fan. That's that, that. That's original Nescafe. Original, yeah. Look yeah. at this. See? No label. No label. No name. No nothing. No that's, taste. That's no great. flavor. This you stuff. pay only. No price. Yeah. That's great. Look at it just steaming away in the cup over there. Did you get the leak? Steaming away out there. Oh, oh, that was... Whose finger was that? <laughs> What's that guy's name? Ernest? Ernest T or whatever? Yeah, that was those commercials and he goes up and sticks his face in the camera. Don't you understand, Vern? Yeah, Vern. Vern, that's it. He's always talking to Vern, his neighbor. Action! <laughs> oh no, I dribbled it all down myself. <laughs> that wasn't very good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, till I, wait till you see this back, you can laugh. <laughs>
okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah, but I'm brushing my teeth right now. Half of it, it probably won't get used again. Hmm. What's the date now? Uh, 20, I don't know, 23rd, 24th. And this is the first time you wash your hair? 11 days, that's not too bad. Oh, I gotta get rid of this stuff in my mouth. Natural oil's good for your hair. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem is the soap won't lather. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta use a little more. It must be this cheap shampoo, I don't know. Mm, Peter Glenday, <laughs> how are you this morning? Where are you off to? What are uh, you doing? I don't know. You kicked us out of here. <laughs> Where else are we going to go? Uh, we're going up the glacier today. Is that what we're doing? Hopefully to Moraine Camp. But we'll have to see about that. Well, we're just wasting film here, so I think we'll just turn her off and go down and meet everybody. Oh, he's this good. morning, August 24th, here they are packing up, ready to go to the White Glacier, the ablation zone. Ah, it's the Magic Swiss Pantry. Yes, good stuff. Oh, Wonderful yeah. flute. What do we got? We've got uh, maple and brown sugar. Oh, I thought Miles would sneak in that sugar and spice stuff that's just terrible. Get you guys to eat it up while you're up there. Which city in Canada has the largest population? Uh, Almont. <laughs> <laughs> largest population of what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, granola bars? Chocolate cube. It's not fair, you guys get all the good food. We'll just be sitting back here having, I don't know, hamburgers. hamburgers, bacon and eggs, possibly some spaghetti, pizza, lasagna. We'll think of you eating all that mouse food up on the glacier. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. <laughs> so you starting to get the hang of that, uh, Mr. Coppola? Well, we'll, we'll zoom, in, zoom in here on you and see what you're doing. I'm just packing away my food. Skin magazines? What are you doing there? <laughs> just kidding, folks. Purely research here. Why would I carry a book when I can carry images? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful home this is. I can't come in. I won't be able to see anything. I'd rather walk with dry feet all day. this just to go to Aurelia. Jesus. Not just to Aurelia, it's to the Jamboree in Aurelia. <laughs> it's a Cub Scout reunion. Hey, remember, we're not sitting in land speed right now. Right You're certainly not. You're already behind schedule. <laughs> <laughs> No, two and a half minutes, not bad. We're usually an hour out. So I'll just have to uh, uh, change the schedule. Change the schedule. Yeah, I need some time to get out. Onwards and upwards. 
I have to save that stuff for Sunday. What day is it there, Richard? Uh, Wednesday. What's your, what's your watch say, Richard? Tuesday. Yeah, I'll gladly pay you Friday for a hamburger today. <laughs> Putting this pot back on here just for decoration and make it look like I'm going up to catch a pail of water. Pete will come it. down with half the crown. I can launch launch rockets off of this. The Heiberg jump. I can't lift it, I shouldn't be wearing it. Whack me with your skis, beat them, I'll be a really unhappy guy. Yeah, you would be, wouldn't you? You get fatter. Which way are you going? Back up this slope and along the ridge? Off into the sunset. You realize I'm doing this all for the girl that I haven't met yet. What's her name? I don't know. That's a funny name. Uh, I'm not going to enjoy this at all. Uh, let's see where they're going here. Yeah. yeah, and this is just the beginning. This just gets them up to the upper house. Now, can't shoot up there. It's a little too bright. And yeah, not anymore. And these are their immortal tracks. Well, Pete, this is about where the film ends, so have a nice trip. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we'll see you later. See you in a few days, eh? Yeah. You're not actually filming, are you? No, I'm not going to make any more rude gestures now around the page. <laughs> here we are in the science department. The only studious person here. Over there in the corner. <laughs> Working up that fjord uh, data, Bob? No. Reading a dirty book. Reading <laughs> a dirty book. The ice dam lakes last an axle hybrid. There's one of them right there. Well, there's not much to film in here, is there? Oh. <laughs>
comes the beer wagon. Goggles and Paisano. That's amazing. I used a uh, bowline. Good for you. Whoa! Didn't use a practice trucker's hitch. No. It's the little beast. <laughs> Where'd you go up to the water in this sucker, Pete? Uh, oh, about there. Yeah, that's about where I got to. The basket was full of water. It was full of ice. It was pouring on me. It was for you. Good stuff. Only one more load down the fjord, eh? One more, more have to draw drop. lots to get the last run. Well, fans, it's getting cold and your cameraman's cold. Right. <laughs> Look at those goggles, they're awesome. I want to get a zoom in on those goggles. <laughs> Look at those Carreras. Those are Fritz. Those are, these must be Fritzes. They've got to be Fritzes. Uh, he probably had more than one. Chefs. Uh, Axel. Hi, Oh, I spelt it wrong. The chefs of Axel Iber, 1988. Guest on the show, chefs of Axel Heiberg, is Peter Doran. What are you going to be cooking tonight, Peter? Hamburgers flambe. <laughs> He's approaching the barbecue now. Oh, there's the wood. Charcoal. Where's the axe? It's up here. Where? Up here. Chef, he's the sous chef. <laughs> Why not the chef? He's the sous chef. I just cut all the wood. No, the wood's in the uh, in the barbecue, all ready to go. Yeah, first you gotta chop your wood. Are we ready to go? Are we gonna do this thing? Yeah, we're rolling. Okay, we're making hamburgers flambe. <laughs> chop the wood, about one quart of wood. <laughs> Take it down to Dangerous Dorn's barbecue. And then you add jet fuel. JP4 preferable, but any brand will do. <laughs> and it helps to have a, a good supply. A good supply of jet fuel we have. Yeah. Yep, there we are. Apply jet fuel liberally to cut wood. Uh, pan back here, please. <laughs> Cameraman's kind of. Liberal application of the jet fuel to the cut wood. This is important. Just a dash. <laughs> As the cameraman moves back. Remember to move your, your <laughs> gas can away from the fire. Yep. This is imperative. Now you okay. give it just a second to soak all the juices up. Maybe you should clear your... You gotta wear your safety goggles. <laughs> These are very important. <laughs> your escape room as well. Now. Ah. This is the tricky part. Which way is the wind blowing? <laughs> uh, it appears to be no blowing uh, 
It's blowing that way, is that right? Mm, that'd that be way. a fair a fair guess, yes. Okay. One eddy match. There's gas all over the, <laughs> the rock there. May take two eddy matches. <laughs> Possibly three. Any matches? <laughs> <laughs> Careful. <laughs> and apply. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wind's blowing this way. <laughs> That's the difference. The wind's blowing the wrong way. Okay, try this again. Four Eddie matches. Four Eddie matches. Find a good. <laughs> Got to get it in, in the, uh, <laughs> the barbecue. You ready? Here we go. There we go. <laughs> and approximately uh, how long after that will we be ready to, uh, to eat? Uh, coals will take about uh, 40 minutes or so. Okay. Well, we'll return. So, well, let's take a commercial break now and uh, we'll come back later. I'll just have a sip of wine. <laughs> Tonight's episode of Chefs of Axel Heiberg is brought to you by Cam, a tasty luncheon meat. Tastes as good going down as it does coming up. Cam. Welcome back. Notice the coals are ready here. The flames are just lapping above the grill, just like at that mecca of hamburger places, Harvey's. We've got the hamburgers that Miles' mother made for us. You take them, making sure to remove the wax paper first. Place them gingerly upon the grilling rack. Like so. And we'll add them. Good practice for my pieces. How many are we going to be doing here? Oh, I almost forgot. Remember the safety goggles. You never know when fat's going to spray up into your face and maybe make you go blind. Now, we here at uh, Axel Heiberg are six people right now. I believe it's our intention to make 12 burgers, is that right? Uh, as you can see, we may have a space probe. But experience cooks has a hair there. That's one of Mrs. Ecclestone's hips. We've got eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many is that? Eight. Now they're sticking to the grill. It's okay, it's okay. Twelve minus eight is four, so we need four more hamburgers. Four more hamburgers. These ones will have to be moved towards the center later. There we go. Something like this inside. What's that? Oh, hi. <laughs> uh, we got 12 burgers on. Everything's ready to go. Potatoes are ready in a few minutes. Potatoes, that's my sous chef. Oh, you know we timed awesome. this just wrong. What's that? I said we timed this just wrong. Uh, you're absolutely right. 
Our chef. It's too bad the chef has Welcome back. <laughs> the result? Burgers Flam Day. You notice the sauce that's been put on since then? That's a Glen Day original. Sitting with good friends. Serving himself. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the Galloping Gourmet always does. Oh, I, I forgot about that, sorry. Just fill a piece mm. of cheese. Piece of cheese or not? Here, Peter, have a piece of cheese or not. Ching, ching. Ching, ching. <laughs> which one are you? Which one are you going to bite down first, eh, Bob? The Chefs of Axel Heiberg, 1988, Episode Two. Hey, Giuseppe, two large want? Italian stallion pizzas to go. Okay, okay, Christ Almighty, what do you think? And I'm working his ass off over here trying to make a dough. Holy smolies. Where the hell is that Pietro with the goddamn car? Little shit, should have been back hours ago. It's probably out the boff and the little girls. I know that guy. Hey. Anyway, here we go. Hello, and welcome to the next installment of Great Chefs of Axel Hyper. Tonight, as you may have gathered, we're making pizza. Rather, I'm making pizza, and my colleagues are going to be dining upon this pizza. We've been able to hone our pizza making skills here at Axel Hybrid with a very fine edge, and we now are able to offer two varieties ham and pineapple, and bacon, onion, and mushrooms. And on this evening's program, I'll be taking you through the various steps involved in producing these pizzas at very high latitude. Many of the actions you're going to see are rather dangerous. Please do not attempt these in your own home unless under parental supervision. But before we continue, first, a word from our sponsor. Our sponsor this evening, Olympic brand chopped ham, guaranteed to give you the eternal flame. Welcome back to the great chefs of Axel Heiberg. Here you see the raw ingredients of one of the Axel High Latitude Specials. This is what we call the uh, Inferno. Here we're inserting it into the oven. Again, this is dangerous. Do not try this in your own home without the supervision of adults. We put it in the oven for approximately 20 minutes. And this, of course, is what the final result looks like. In the process, it's transmogrified into something we refer to as Hawaiian hurl. Mm -mm -mm. And this one is now ready for dining or wallpapering as you see fit. And so ends another episode of The Chefs of Axel Heiberg. We interrupt your regularly scheduled program for the news. Temperature minus one, 
Minimum temperature, minus 4. Precipitation, at 2 millimeters. Tendency, 3 to 5, and no traffic, over. And Ice Island at 2-6, that checks it all. Thanks. Um, could you ask um, Leif Lungard, or probably Leif, I guess, um, if the uh, hydrographic harrow is up on the island, it's uh, sort of a, uh, a harrow, and uh, it's used for sort of uh, breaking up the snow on the runway. Just try to track it down. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, okay, Roger. Uh, what the... Could you describe this harrow to me, what it might look like? Yeah, it's a steel-framed uh, piece of equipment with um, many points uh, going down from a vertical uh, onto the ice that's ending in points. It's almost like a, one of those bed of nails type things, and it's dragged behind something to break up the snow bed. Okay, yeah, I have some uh, radar right on the back. I think of uh, a piece of a frame that closed uh, was using to drag the airstrip, or quote, on it. Uh, it's a metal frame of uh, small I-beams, uh, but I don't uh, recall any uh, spikes or whatever uh, protrusions sticking uh, down vertically. But uh, I'll ask uh, the boys and find out if it's around over. Okay, thanks very much. No over the traffic. And uh, just out of curiosity, is that, uh, you want to know if, uh, is that wanted to be uh, shipped back to Redwood or what? No, not at this time. Just trying to track it down. Okay, good enough. I sound clear. Expedition Fjord, it's XMH 26. XMH 26, Expedition Fjord, receiving you 4x4, Barry, over. Expedition Fjord 26, evening, 5x5, five five. go ahead. The six conditions, estimated 1,000 broken, 3,000 overcast, visibility 6 miles in very light snow, sea level pressure 127, sky bulb minus 2, wind 0 at 8 knots, gusting to 14, altimeter 984, clouds, cumulus 8, stratocumulus 2, under remarks, convection fog over glaciers to north, maximum temperature 1 decimal 0, minimum temperature minus 2 decimal 5, station 1 millimeter snow, and tendency is 103. Now on that, carry over. Okay, that's position fjord, XMH26, that checks it all okay, thanks. And um, at this time, uh, Miles, can you uh, give me a uh, it, are we, uh, okay, this is what it is. Do you have two loads still out of uh, expedition? Uh, the reason I ask is that if you do, I'm going to try to work it out so that we have uh, two aircraft to use on the 6th. Go ahead. Uh, to 6th Mary, I'm going to ask you about that myself. We have people here who have their work well completed, and we're wondering if they could um, maybe change their flight to September 1 instead of September 8. And because we do need flights, maybe they could go out uh, Monday or Tuesday of next week, over. Okay, Roger, we checked that, and um, uh, they're going east, are they? Go ahead. Roger, um, down through to Montreal, I think one will going on to Toronto, that may be a bit of a problem, but we can work that out later, over. Okay, Roger, check, so um, give me the name, please. Uh, okay, the first name is Gilbert, G-I-L-D-E-R-T, initial R, and Lauren Peter, copy that, over. I've got uh, Gilbert, go ahead, the second one. One, D-O-R-A-N, Peter. Uh, I'm not over. Yeah, Roger, stand by
We'll see if we can uh, change them to Thursday, September the 1st, um, going east uh, to Montreal at least. Um, and uh, consequently, just to uh, reconfirm with you then, that um, when would you like to see that first twin otter up there? Go ahead. Pacific uh, Mary, um, sometime maybe the 29th or the 30th, I think, uh, the weather dependent, of course, over. Okay, Jack, somewhere between August 28th and August 3-0, right? That's a Roger, over. Okay, we checked that, yeah. Uh, we'll certainly be looking at it, and um, as soon as it looks good, we'll uh, get up there. Are we still looking at a, a wheel landing? Go ahead. Six, the uh, runway has got a fair coating of snow over it and it's pretty well frozen up. You may be able to get by on skis. I can check that out a little bit more carefully for you if you want, over. Well, if you tell me how many inches of you snow you've got on there, I could uh, party through. Uh, go ahead. Six, I would say probably in the order of two to three, over. Yeah, okay, check that out. Okay, I think we're probably on wheels so still. We'll just keep tabs on uh, how much precipitation you get in the next little while and uh, I'll get that in the book and we'll work on those, um, those reservations. I have uh, one for the long shot. We're, we've been chased on the glacier a couple of times. I don't suppose there's a spare screw lying around over. Well, we put them all away for the winter, uh, the mile fled. I kind of figured that. It was worth a try. Thanks anyway, Barry. We have no further traffic. Axe to make it to the Six Ice Island. Nice Island, uh, the uh, hydrographic arrow is here on the island. Over. Okay, we checked it out. Okay, thanks a lot. I found clear. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, go ahead and start my sir, just a second, my lovely assistant here is going to talk to you. Isn't she beautiful? The lovely uh, assistant will now cut the uh, uh, right down the center. Right down the center. This is the ceremonial, open, the ceremonial opening of the Big Newtons. And we're, we're losing. Oh, here, here we go. go. Hey, hey. There you go. All right. Big Newtons. That one. <laughs> mm. There we go. Thank you. Ah. Mm. Sediment core. I don't think I'll be able to push it right through it it's so tight. Yeah, that's what I see. Gonna have to cut it off and we'll lose about, uh, about an inch and a half of that. What? That's all we can do. Hold on, I'm going to zoom in on the core catch. Uh, Pete Dorn special. Uh, this was made from a mandarin orange tin, yes. We had to sacrifice that can of oranges while the other guys were away. <laughs> Look at that, it could even be used again. Core catcher. Perfect. We're catching the bottom of the core. That's the bottom of the core right down there. And that's the part that we lost. Here's the part that he lost. And there's the core from Color Lake. What are we going to be doing next, Richard? 
Well, we're going to try and section this off into one centimeter sections. And uh, that's going to be the tricky part. So maybe we should turn off the camera and come back when we <laughs> master it. <laughs> we're back again. You got to pick it up. If you just stand that right up on end, they'll come up the top. Yeah, but we've got to measure it out. So. Well, you can just measure what comes out the end. Yeah. So you see? Well. Just push down and hold too while it's standing. Yeah. Indeed. Start. What do you think? Should we extrude just a centimeter at a time or try and get uh, we had a total of seventy four centimeters? August twenty seven. Four centimeters. What was it? It's like three meters of water. The real teller will be when we get to, if we get 70, what am I talking about? It's not 74, it starts at 30 here. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. And there you have it, on Peter Dorn's word. Okay. Could have put these all in individual zip blocks. Maybe we will anyway. Thank you. 
it's collapsing along the side. I suppose that's often just being wedged out the side as well. So. Did we include it or discard it? We include it. going around the room, making the people sick that are watching. <laughs> the sky cam. Okay, let's uh, just to reiterate, reiterate what you're doing here is uh, sectioning the sediment core that we have just obtained from the shallow end of Color Lake. That would be the west end. And we got using a long acrylic tube, which is just the bottom of his nose there. long metal pipe secured to that and hammered it with a sledgehammer. Until it broke. Until it broke. But we're not telling Bob that. Because <laughs> Bob told us it would break. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And we said, no, it won't break. It won't break. So far, he's, he's still in the dark as to that. So, that's about all there is to that. And uh, now back to our regularly scheduled program. The Paddy Stack. And never need to touch the meat. I uh, see we changed our method a little bit because we were having problems, but now it's working just fine. Look at that patty. Beauty, isn't it? Beautiful patty. Just see that down Just hold that there for a second. Right in. Oh, look at that patty. That's a fine sediment patty. That's from what about how deep is that? Uh, that's about 34 centimeters. Right. Getting a little drier now, though. Uh, not quite as uh, good and sloppy as on the top.
of these high quality technical tools. <laughs> Did we make a killing selling these or what? Supervisor of operations. <laughs> centimeters of compression taking these out of this tube. Notice the uh, the plungers there. Three <laughs> snow density tubes. Someone will be happy to see that. Yeah. <laughs> Hardy Gramberg's box, snow box, and uh, that thing costs something like $150 to buy. It's ridiculous. It's just a piece of sheet metal. Just like this expensive tool. <laughs> That's right. only good for uh, fairly uh, loose snow. Mm. Yeah, you start at the top down in a snowbank. Top down, just go all the way to the bottom. Expedition Fjord proper. Little white dots you see are snow geese. Some of them white, some of them gray, the white being adults, the gray being juveniles. And then we'll just get that, see if we can't get a little bit closer.
No, uh, they the two ply tissue. Excuse me, sir. Do you prefer two ply or three ply tissue paper? I don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> We got the laughing in here, we gotta do it without laughing. Okay, you ready? You got the camera rolling? Yeah, it's rolling. You ready and <laughs> hey, you just cut in at the peak of the, the height of the flame there. <laughs> Pretty good. So soldier, you're going home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be home soon, huh? <laughs> and it's all the ladies I want to say hello to. Oh, you're not going home. No, what the hell am I filming you for? Oh. This bottle, this is going home, man. This yeah. is all my hard work. Yeah. All my hard work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, this one later. So, did, what did you accomplish here, soldier? Uh, well, uh, uh, quite a bit. Fought for my country. And I'm proud, proud Canadian. Glad to be going home. Keeping up the sovereignty, yeah? Yeah. Instant mechanic at work here. You must have had a mechano set when you were a child. That's the only thing. The workhorse of the north. Do -do -do -do. Let's go. Yeah, the um I don't know if that's what we'll go back. Oh, going up. Make it work. We'll cross thread enough nuts and it'll stay on. Something to do. What's the gun for, Pete? To shoot photographers. <laughs> <laughs> journalists, man. We're journalists. How do you think we fought this war up here without guns? We're standing, this is Canadians fighting for their sovereignty. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure Peter wants to hear that one. <laughs> if any of them uh, y Yankee uh, icebreakers come through here, we're ready for them. Yeah. Any Ruskies come out in the fjord there, pop up in their submarines, we'll blow them away with our 12 gauge here. And if those mean old rabbits come around again. Yeah. Well, we supplied them with guns last Wabbits. year to help our cars. Wabbits. Nasty wabbit. A nasty wabbit. I'm gonna make a wabbit stew out of you. Lord, my name's Elma Fudd. As soon as I get this nut threaded. Oh, here comes another one of them barrels. That's perfect English. One of them barrels. One of them dare barrels, eh, mine? Yep. I've been up here too long, eh? There's that rifle again. We're going to have to slow. carry them down. Yeah. Well, okay. unless we go slow. Real slow. And flat. Look at that pipe in his mouth. Watch He's... the right hand swing around.
I'm glad I took mine down. I'm glad I'm decided not to go back, huh? Got a pack of Nansen sled. I was taught by the master himself. Peter Adams. Fuck is it?
it came in. One thing I wouldn't mind doing is getting some semblance of order in all these uh, piles of JP4, get them piled up in a reasonable place to get the diesel away to call. sampling half an hour ago. Yeah. But it's nice weather. It sure is. For our audiences at home. September 1. September 1st. We're supposed to leave in two days. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> this could be the last documentary we ever make. No, I shouldn't say that. Oh, we'll have to put away the swim sets this year. Kind of cheese. Scotch and cheese. We're going to learn about naivety today. <laughs> Might be, uh, how appropriate. It's beautiful, beautiful table you've got there. Oops, excuse me. Oh, I've got new shoes here. Oh, I've got a little dance. Oh, shoes. What are we doing here? Oh. We're running the samples from our exciting excursion today. Don't you remember that? Mm hmm. Look at those numbers. Hmm. Won't make much sense to me. Probably because they're out of focus. Hmm. What's in there? Oh, all kinds of gory chemicals. Mm. And what's that? Huh? What's what? This? That's if you get the wrong answer. What? You got the wrong answer. You get electroshocked. <laughs> you get the Cousinart treatment. Okay, we'll do this again. We'll start again. We're having a picture of someone actually doing some research here at Axel Library. Okay. All I'm doing is doing pHs for today's profile. That's it. 
Cool. Simple. And why do you want to find out the profile and the pHs? Because that's my job. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm paid to do that. I'm not paid to think. I'm paid to do. Look at that workbench. We've seen that before. How about our sleeping new sleeping quarters? Dorn will never believe this. Sorry about the light. Open the curtains Well, you can't. You can't really see what's going on in here. There's my bed. Oh. Oh, Miles is gonna open up a window for us. The tattered windows of Axel Hyper. Look at there's a tale they could tell. There's the beautiful ski rack that Richard Elgood and Peter Glende designed. Richard Elgood built. Mm -hmm. Oop, skins. There's a map the Germans left. What's that? There's another one. Well, here's something that'll be back with us. What's that? Oh, there's my bed again. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa we almost had scrambled eggs, guys. And here's Miles juggling. That's <laughs> <exact. laughs> And over here, the dreaded clock. Right in here. Look at that little baby. Hear that? That will wake you up. What time it is, man? For a drink! For a drink! Okay. Oh, there it is. This, uh, this, this, this portion of the program has been brought to you by Johnny Walker Red. It's not a communist drink. It's not it. It's just fine, smooth stuff. You doing the pH on that Johnny Walker over there, buddy? <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Since when do you have a pH meter in your mouth? It's called your tongue. <laughs> Who's got a glass? I got a glass. Kim's got a glass. All he has to do is reach for it. Now we're using that one at a time here. Oh. And the doctor's got his bottle too. I'm not You're a folks. Ah, Slangeva. Slangeva. Skull. Of course, skull. It's been in the back. Well, room. here's to weather permitting. <laughs> 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 the what? Weather Just a weather permitting. I'll take a bet of five dollars. It says that we're not out here on Saturday. I think we're going to be out of here on Saturday. I'll bet you five bucks. Okay. I'll bet you five bucks. And it's witnessed on film. Yeah. Oh, we never shook on it though. Because <laughs> I'm standing over here. <laughs> Just a minute. Jim will shake on him. <laughs> Today is uh, Thursday, right? What is it? One September. And it's uh, you can't see my watch, obviously. It is 9:48, according to my AccuChronometer. Five dollar AccuChronometer. Yeah. <coughs> Time in the box. There's our smoke alarm that uh, that didn't work when we came up from the kitchen house and smelled smoke. Let's see if it still works, Pete. Time out. Sports fans, for this quick word. It doesn't work, Pete. We would have died! <laughs> right on. This thing's been in here for th oh, three weeks. We are safety conscious people. If we knew how to operate it. <laughs> I forgot. It's different than the one I have in my own home where you just push it and it goes off. You hold that for three seconds. Waft, waft your feet under that and we'll be out of here. Really How's the weather? The weather's not good, Pete. Closed in again. Sure so, is. Got in around behind Normally, if we look at these windows, we can see all the way down the fjord. Almost to color Pete. This is good weather for burning fuel. Well, what, well, what kind of fuel? Poor old Pete Dorn. Yep. The master taught us well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we couldn't keep up with us. None of those wash, wash basins. Yeah. 
I almost see down the glacier today, but not quite. Look at those snowmobiles. Just sitting up there waiting. Look at them. We could do flaming burnouts. I don't know if you understand why that thing goes out of focus. It shouldn't. I guess it just focuses on the window. Yeah, probably. Slight reflection says that's it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's the sensor thing here, my finger. Whoa. You can't smell that back home, can you, kids? <laughs> Woo! Oh. That's not me. We're out of here. I don't know who that is. Was it you? This is the guy who's pretending nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Was it you? I'm never to go tell. Yeah. I don't, I don't fart and tell. Mm -hmm. Ah, but you said it was a fart. It could have just been your body. Yeah, it was a fart. <laughs> when was the last time you had a shower, soldier? I'd say about uh, three weeks ago there, son. Count them. One, two, three weeks. <laughs> and four. <laughs> uh oh. Long time. Put the microphone down for this one. You'll notice a tremor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa. That's not from the ground shaking. That's just because I'm falling over from the smell. What are interesting things we got in here? Oh, we got some art from Barbara Mueller. Da -da 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 -da. Mm. You can rate it yourself. I give it one of these. <laughs> Actually, I quite like it. It is kind of nice, isn't it? It's completely different than anything you can find up here. Oh, what's yeah, this? Well, the bird's fine, but it, the butterfly and the snail, I don't know. Oh, I wish I could get that in full. It's supposed to signify tropics in the up here. Yeah, but... Yeah, but... Yeah, yeah but... Uh, yeah, but it doesn't uh, really uh, make uh, any sense, does it? These are for Pete... These are Pete Doran's. Proctologist at large. <laughs> yep. Mm. The man lets his fingers do the walk. Mm. He's a good lad. Just go and do some surveying for him tomorrow. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. And we've got some wildlife creeping around here too. Look at this thing. Mm. Everything's out of focus. That's the closest you get to a bear. This uh, yeah, out of focus. Yeah, it's out of focus. Well, you never know. This is a flying bear. This is the Rusky, Boris the bear. Boris the bear. <laughs> hey, where's those uh, geology guys? Uh, <laughs> stuff. Oh, this is. Here's here's Jim's croquet ball. There it is. For all of you to see. Peter fixed it. Look at that. You should have used five minute epoxy. That tape's just so it gives it away. Yep. What, you mean there's something wrong with it? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they don't come like that. You mean yeah. concretions aren't. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the stuff Richard's been hanging out, f just keeping his uh, keeping his sanity with. Hey, you're in the library now. What's that stuff called? Mm. Yes. Mixture number seventy-nine is what it's called. Hmm. To me, uh, it looks like the wood chips you find in the garden. What other interesting things we got in here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here, Air Fritz's pipes. Here's a here's a good one. You didn't see the real fancy one, though, did you? Yeah. Here. Okay, here's some export rolling papers. Now, were these Fritz's? And what was he doing with these? 
Here's the best place. Rolling tobacco. Get this one on, Bill? That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Woo! Look at that. Well, what's that chunk of dirt in your beard? <laughs> Where? What other neat stuff we got there? Oh, look at this. These things scare Richard. These are really scary things, kids. Stay, you stay away from these, kids. We'll just... Dr. Larry, Dr. Fine, boom, 3D. Whoa, that's really strange looking. Of course. What else we got in here? Is there hope for higher education? Turn in next week. No way. Toilet pin box. Oh, I would not want to sit on a toilet with pins in it. Oh, we have to. We're macho guys. Where'd those 303 shells go? There is absolutely no hope for science. Yeah, let's see. Well, I think we're getting away with one tea caddy, guys. One tea caddy with the stuff? One tea caddy with the stuff. Two cardboard, two small cardboard boxes, one large cardboard box. What if we send back one box and one with a drill pin. in it? Yeah. Five fails. This will be sick. I'm really tempted to split the loads into two tea caddies because they're getting harder and harder to find. Just have two light tea caddies rather than. Because they do it by weight. Possibly, or I split some of the weight in this one just so that it really like easy to handle. Because there's another one there ready to go, and there's I think one down down below we should take inside. One down below is for the chimney. Oh, is it? Left well, there's another one up here. The handles on. You can leave one. It's no big deal. I know we're half a dozen more still. Harder and harder to find now. Looking pretty good up here. Inventory tomorrow, I'm surveying. That's what we drove down to the dealer. The black cycle. Yeah, and you got pretty muddy, didn't you? Yeah, it was a fun time. Yeah. Oh, you want to see the ceiling that I've been looking at for three weeks while sleeping? We'll go back into the bedroom. Yep. Here we go. I'll climb into bed. Ugh. Well, we'll be packing up and getting ready to go. The plane should be here at about what time? On if Saturday. If all goes according to schedule, Pete, which never does in the Arctic, of course, uh, I would have to say about 11 o'clock. Mmm. That means we better eat by 8 because you were an hour off last time. Well, that's because uh, Duncan was flying, and Duncan just doesn't pay much attention to the clock. He just gets there as fast yeah. as he can. Yeah. He's a real cowboy, isn't he? Duncan's neat. Yeah. He's what you call sort of a maverick in the Arctic, but he's, he's pretty good. Interesting man. The only person that I think that may know as much about the Arctic in terms of exploration is just about anybody alive. Doesn't doesn't fly with a map. It's pretty impressive. Leaves that to his cool pilot, I guess. <laughs> just writing up my diary now. Now what should I start with? Pete. Peter Dene is wandering around with the camera, making a record. Cutting a record. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Cameron is drunk and he doesn't even drink. This little guy over here has kept us warm uh, for three weeks. This diesel. The diesel rabbit. <laughs> Mr. Coleman. Yes. We're smelling 
We got pretty scared though. We figured we might have a fire in here somehow. What is this? Tangle a mess. Look at those socks. We'll zoom in on those for you sports fans. Woo-wee. Fortunately, in the Arctic, fungus doesn't grow that well. Because I wouldn't get up that close to socks normally. <laughs> Not my own, anyway. Can't tell the much difference between that and that. What's he doing there? What are you doing? Just rinsing off the old probe. <laughs> yeah, you're sick. The uh, left cage probe. I didn't say anything. <laughs> no, but I saw the look on your face. Left cage probe goes in a little plastic bag with a tissue. Yeah. Tissue wrapped around it. We'll just carry it in our pocket. Okay. Is that anything like the meat probe on your microwave? I don't know, I don't have a microwave. Well, cameraman's getting pretty bored. Let's see how dizzy I can get. by me every time I have a fucking drink in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa, we're getting pretty dizzy. Turn the other way. We need a cyclone here, or an anti-cyclone. Oh. <laughs> we're almost back to normal. There we are. Hello, Richard. Oh, something I wanted to say. Hello! A satisfied customer. Come back! 